Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara and today these campers are coming together to find that life is more fun with friends. So I'm using S'more the Merrier and one guy from Let's Go Nuts, the largest outside in stitched rectangle in watercolor wishes rainbow pack. This is the six by six and flippin' awesome die set. Cut some squares from the 12 by 12 watercolor wishes rainbow and a scalloped rectangle from the six by six pad using some craft card stock as well. And from the build a campsite, I'm using the small tree and some acetate. I'll start by adhering down my panels. So here's that stitched rectangle. And then the scalloped rectangle comes next. And I'm going to position that a little higher up and I will put a sentiment down below. All right, here is the flippin' awesome main mechanism and I cut that out of white cardstock. I'm folding it on every score line and reinforcing that with my bone folder. Now I am folding that one way and pressing that down and then folding it the other way and pressing it down on each of those score lines. And that way, when I'm done, I will have a very flexible mechanism and it will be very easy to flip. So let's see here. Ooh, <laughs> very flexible. All right, I'm folding it in half and folding the tabs around the back so it kind of hugs the other side and putting on some strong double sided tape. This is quarter inch double-sided tape from Lawn Fawn, putting two pieces on each because this is the only part that's going to be adhered to the card. So I wanna make sure it's nice and strong. Take off that release paper. And then again, I will fold it in half, fold over those tabs, and then attach it to my scalloped rectangle right in the center. Once I have it uh, pretty well centered, I'm going to make sure it works and it works very well. Now I can start putting my scenes together. You will see the backs of these. So I use that 12 by 12 because it's double sided and I have these one inch thick pieces of craft for the ground. And I wanted to put stars up at the top and I messed one up. So a couple of ways to fix this and I'm going to show you both. Well, there's probably lots more, but anyway, one is start over, just flip that square over because those stars at the bottom will be covered with the ground, the craft. And so I'm just redoing it. And so I stamped those out. These stars are from S'more the Merrier and I used clear ink and an acrylic block. Now here's the other way that I'm going to fix some of those stars. They just didn't get enough embossing powder on them. So I've got that Lawn Fawn embossing pen and added a little bit more, put on some more of the embossing powder, heat that up to melt it with my heat tool, and voila, they're, they're fixed. So I want this night sky to be a little darker at the top, and I'm ink blending with some Wilted Violet Distress Ink and then I'll come in with some chip sapphire. So those stars are gonna appear a little brighter in the dark, dark sky. Once I have that chip sapphire blended at the top, I'm gonna take that wilted violet, blend it a little bit more, and fade it into the color of the paper. I'll blend gathered twigs onto the ground pieces, just at the tops where it will be furthest back. And once I have those all blended, I'm gonna smush a little bit of that gathered twigs onto my craft mat and take a very stiff old brush to speckle on some texture for all those ground pieces and make them look like dirt. The trees are shaded in rustic wilderness distress ink and I'm uh, coming at them like, like I'm brushing their teeth here. So this is one of those ink blending brushes, one of the little ones. I, I think they remind me of dental tools. <laughs> so it uh, gives me a nice way to get into those pine bow angles, <laughs> I guess. 
Next, I get to stamp out the stars of the show and their little accessories. So I'm using Jet Black ink because it's Copic friendly and I will be using Copics today. I wanted two of most of these items, but I also needed four of others because I've got four scenes going on and they all include a fire. <laughs> I also stamped out two foxes and two squirrels. And starting with Mr. Fox here, he's going to be mainly E teens and R zeros, starting with this E11 finding where I want these shadows. Now I was not working hard to figure out shadowing compared to the fire, because I know that would give a glow to these animals, but for my scenes today, I did not focus on that. I think sometimes that glow can be intimidating and I just wanted to show how it looks great without a glow. Sometimes I do use a glow on these types of scenes, but today I just figured hmm, it, it really didn't need it. It wasn't, wasn't necessary. All right, back to Mr. Fox. So here's the R05 getting a little darker. So I started getting all of those teens first and then coming over it with the R zeros. So here's that R02 to blend in that 05 and now darkening it up with the E17 and the R08. So that's a color combination that I really do like for foxes. It gives them that red brown look. It's just kind of one I gravitate to often. Next comes the squirrel, and I only use one squirrel. He's going to find himself on the final scene. So basically, the first three scenes are going to show one guy each with their campfire. So one lonely animal at a campfire until we get to the final scene where they all come together and the sentiment says everything is more fun with friends. And I'm guessing that this squirrel is that initiator. You know, you always have one friend in the group that can do that, that can bring everybody together. They're like the glue in, in your friend group or, or family. And, and that's this guy. That's our squirrel. He's, he's uh, an extrovert, we'll say. All right. Well, if you're following along with the colors, so I used E30s and now some W's to blend him in. I also used those W's for the fox above on the white areas, but I wanted to move on to, we've got two more guys to, to color, and I wanted to show you how I color their fur or feathers. So here's our hedgehog, and I'm using a variety of colors, W's and C's, so warm grays and cool grays, E's, so earth tones or browns, and this is the 43. I'll even use E30s as well. Here's the E47. You can see what I'm doing with each of these colors is creating little lines or dots to give him that texture in his fur. Here's that cool gray six, so a little darker. And right now he just looks like he's got a lot of dots. But what I do to get that all combined is take a light color. So here's the C0 and blend it through. So it's not gonna blend it totally, but it gives it just enough so that it looks like it is his fur and not just dots on top of the paper. All right, his body is an E30 and blending in with an E31, trying to give him some definition to his head and under his arm and, and under his body. I blended that in with the E30 and now with an E33 doing the same thing, finding those shadows and darkening them up. And I'll blend that out as well and decided I want to get that into his uh, prickly fur so that it kind of combines his skin color with the rest of him. A little C6 for the inside of his ear, and we're on to the owl. That cap is off camera, but that's an E43 that I'm starting with here. And I'm going to use a combination of browns and grays for this guy as well. 
I like to Google these animals to see their colors and their patterns of their fur or feathers. And uh, well, all I do is I put their name in the search box and then I click on the word image and I get these images. You probably know this, but I, I put the, I see all the images and then I'll look at the real animal. But I also like to look at the cartoon version of these animals to see how other people interpret their colors and well, there's just a wide variety out there, so it's uh, it's a way that I I learn and keep changing how I color. All right, so you can see I'm just doing a little bit of that texture and changing back and forth between the E's and the C's and the W's. I'll darken them up with an E44, get in those shadows, and uh, one thing I realized is it's easier to get the base light colors in first and then go over that with the darker colors. If I start with darker ones, I tend to make them too dark. So I start with the lighter ones. Okay, so these are the YR27 and 24. Now, this is where I would say uh, cartoon version because they really don't have that orange of beak and feet, but I wanted to get that orange color on him as it's all around the card. And those are the colors. Everything that I've used is what I'm using on the rest of those items. So the campfire and all the little bits and pieces. And I'm taking the coordinating dies and I'm going to run those through my die cut machine. And here they are. I didn't use the moon, so I took that out. I'm gonna set them all aside and get ready to build these scenes. I'm mostly gonna use my tape runner to adhere everything uh, where I want it to be super strong. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape, but I wanted to use tape runner instead of glue because I knew I was gonna move some things around a bit and then I could glue them later if I wanted to. Well, here's that double-sided tape and I'm using it in between each of those score lines. So there's three places where I'm gonna add that for my three panels. And then this panel gets set directly onto the mechanism and there's a perfect outline of where it goes. Take that release paper off and add the next scene and just go on down the line that way. So I butt each of the squares right to that score line, take off the next release paper and put the next square down right at the score line. I could have assembled all my scenes before I put these squares together, but I wanted to keep that little edge that you see on each square kind of free from images so that it kind of looked continuous. And so I decided to wait and put these images on while I have the squares together. So here's Fox and, he, well, he's just warming himself at the fire. He doesn't have anything with him that he's brought along. But now we have Hedgehog here and he is going to have a marshmallow stick in his hand. So I wanna free up his arm there so that he can hold his marshmallow stick. Just taking a little craft knife and cutting around his arm to free it up. And here he is ready to toast that marshmallow <laughs> over the fire. I'll situate him and the fire the way I want. Uh, I wanna make sure that fire doesn't show, at least not too much, on the right side of the scene. One thing I wanted to do is keep a consistent tree line <laughs> on my scenes, and I think I forget that on this one. I'll come back and add those later and make sure to get those, but more important, I needed that flame on his marshmallow because he's he's burning that marshmallow. <laughs> All right, well, our owl is going to be playing guitar, and so I wanted to free up his wing for that, but I'm also going to free up the other wing so that he can reach those strings, so that he can play those chords well. I used to bring my guitar to campfires. Uh, I'm well-versed in campfire songs. Uh, my first degree, uh, bachelor's degree, was uh, music therapy. And so I learned how to play guitar at that time. And I was working one summer at an Easter Seals camp. 
So a camp for people who had physical challenges. And we used to go out in the wilderness camping. I mean, normally we were in cabins, but once a week we would go out into the wilderness. And (laughs) well, I learned really fast how to light a fire and uh, how to gather the troops around with a guitar and a few campfire songs. All right, on to our final scene. I trimmed this rectangle down a little bit so that it would fit inside that little flap. Once you tuck it in, it will help to keep this mechanism working well. Otherwise, it could be used as a stopper and and it wouldn't push in. So when I created that rectangle, I just made sure that it was longer than that area. All right, adding all the little bits and pieces here. And this is where our squirrel came came through for us and got the gang together. I freed up the wing and arm of the owl and hedgehog, just like I did the other ones. And so just adding my adhesive and putting everybody where they want to sit. And here they are. Now, the sentiment is... Everything is more fun with friends, but all I have on there is a marshmallow. (laughs) So I I need to make sure I have the other ingredients so that they can make s'mores. So this fox is going to hold on to that chocolate bar. Now he looks like he's not going to share, but we'll make sure he shares. (laughs) And then we have the box of graham crackers too. It was funny. I was in Scotland one time and uh, talking about graham crackers for some reason, and they had no idea what I was talking about. We decided they're very much like a digestive biscuit. All right, here is that piece of acetate, and here's where it comes in handy. So I put a piece of double-sided tape on it, and I'm going to tuck that into that flap as well. It seemed once I added that chocolate, uh, everything wasn't flipping back and forth real easily. So in order to make it flow freely, I've got that piece of acetate over the top of it all, and now it works fine. All right, time for the sentiment, and I'm using different words from the S'more the Merrier set to create this and it's everything is more fun with friends as uh, squirrel helps them all to to figure that out and i'm using some clear ink and white embossing powder i'll melt that with my heat tool and cut it into i think it's about a half inch strip and then i'm going to cut some little flags on the ends and ink blend it just the way I ink blended the sky. So a little wilted violet and some chip sapphire as well. I'll wipe the ink off of the embossed area with a paper towel, make sure it's nice and white, and put a little foam tape on the back of that, and then adhere that to my card. Now, I also am going to add a tab to this card, and I gave it the same ink treatment as I did the ground, and I'm putting a little eggplant hemp cord into it, so it's got this nice little hole detail that I can add that cord right in there. I'm just going to double it up and push it through the hole and make a little loop, bring those two ends through the loop and there it is all set to go and here's our card everything is more fun with friends and these guys each scene shows their lonely existence until the end (laughs) and here they are all together well i hope you enjoyed the card today and that it inspired you to either get together with your friends, or create a card all about it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!